My name is Doug Kinkoff, and I am the head of the NKTIA Broadband Programs. Um, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today here in Seattle. Um, the, uh, I'm pleased to state that we're teaming up today with Next Century Cities, Deb, thank you, and the City of Seattle to bring you today's Broadband Summit. This is our sixth, this is NKTIA's sixth regional uh, summit, and uh, it's our second that we are doing with Next Century Cities. NTIA is part, just a little bit on NTIA, the NTIA is part of the Department of Commerce, and we are the principal advisor to the White House on internet and telecom policy issues. One of our key missions is to promote the deployment, adoption, and efficient utilization of internet services. Um, and to accomplish this, we've been working hard on multiple fronts to ensure Americans, regardless of geography, social e economics, and uh, demographics, have the access tools, skills needed to benefit from internet access. Central to this effort is our new Broadband USA program, uh, which is providing free hands-on technical assistance, toolkits, guides, webinars, and other support to communities across the country that are attempting to expand broadband and adoption and deployment. Today's workshop is a critical component of Broadband USA. Uh, today we'll be discussing a wide range of topics to evaluate local broadband needs, different types of business models, financing options, how to apply for federal and state funding, and how to attract private sector investments to communities. As you can see, we have a very full agenda today. Uh, we have a great lineup of speakers and panelists. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Deb Socha, who's going to give you more on the logistics of today's events. And uh, Deb, with Next Century Cities, please. Thank you. So not being as tall as Doug, we have a solution. just so you know why I look so tall. <laughs> so, I'm usually so close to the top of this, it's kind of interesting to have a view. Um, so welcome to Digital Northwest. We are so excited to be here. Uh, this is a great venue, wonderful city. We're very lucky to have the opportunity to be part of this event and work with NTIA and the city of Seattle uh, and the CTO, Michael Matt Miller, who has been a fabulous partner in this effort. I'm the executive director of Next Century Cities, which is an organization, it's a nonprofit, and we support cities and communities across the country who either have or want to have fast, affordable, reliable broadband. Many of the people in this room actually are members of Next Century Cities. We have 130, I think today, 131 cities and communities representing 27 million Americans. So we're pretty excited about the interest in, in ensuring that all have access to fast, affordable, reliable broadband. And we're pleased to spend the day today talking about how we can make that happen. We actually have 90 cities represented in this room today, which is very exciting. Uh, we have 250 registrants. We are live streaming the event, and it will be available afterward on video. So a couple of housekeeping details that are important. One is that the Wi-Fi is Bell Harbor Conference Center. If you need the password, it's Bell, capital B-E-L-L, -L, only the B is capital, B-E-L-L, -L, 0316. And also, we do have a hashtag today. It is hashtag digital NW. Uh, let's make that trend today. That would be really wonderful. So if you are on Twitter, please help us out, take some pictures, tweet some quotes, uh, get us some attention on this issue. So the, we do have three sponsors today that I want to say thank you to. Uh, obviously, we can't do these events without the help of folks who can uh, uh, provide us with the resources necessary to make it happen. So first, I'd like to thank our platinum sponsor, and that's Google. And if any folks from Google are here, if you could stand up, we'll give you a round of applause. There he is. <laughs> thank you, Brian. Um, our gold sponsor today is KeyBank. Could the folks from KeyBank stand, please? I know they're here. 
stepped out for coffee at the exact right moment, but we'll clap for them anyway. And our silver sponsor is Corning. Do we have Corning here? Also stepped out for coffee, but it was very nice of them to sponsor us, so we'll give them a hand as well. Uh, one other housekeeping detail, and that is that uh, if you uh, are interested in going to NTIA-sponsored office hours tomorrow, if you're looking for information, support, assistance around a specific issue, uh, there are folks there to talk to you about grants and financing, and there are also uh, four folks that are, represent next century cities, cities who will give you a hand thinking about what your city's plans are and whether or not you'd like to uh, pursue a pathway that they might have pursued. And that's all, that sign up is all at the um, front desk. You'll see a sign up sheet there and that's for tomorrow morning. So if you're interested in that, please do so. It is now my honor to introduce Mayor Murray. Uh, he became mayor January 1st, 2014. Previous to that, he was a Washington State legislator representing the 43rd District for 18 years. He sponsor sponsored legislation to legalize marriage equality and also to increase funding for affordable housing. The same dedication to social justice shapes Mayor Murray's agenda currently as mayor to make Seattle a safe, affordable, vibrant, and interconnected city for all. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Murray. We had to wait for the train. <laughs> Well, thank you. That was embarrassing. Uh, I came from Capitol Hill and we got stuck in traffic. Well, good morning. It is an honor to be here this morning and welcome to the Digital Northwest Broadband Summit. Uh, I particularly want to welcome my fellow elected officials uh, who are here today. I think everyone who uh, is here, uh, the NTIA, uh, the Broadband USA, Next Century Cities, in the Seattle Department in Innovation and Technology uh, are all here and contributed to making this happen uh, because we know that this is a very important issue for us and our future, uh, particularly when it comes to the issue of moving our economy forward and bringing everybody along. I also want to thank the uh, state's chief information officer, uh, Michael Cockrell, who is attending on behalf of Governor Inslee. Access to broadband internet is critical to the success of the 21st century. It is nearly impossible to run a business, to search for a job, to succeed in school, or to do our work in government without it. But as we know, the digital, digital revolution is leaving some behind. And as a result, many of today's most challenging social problems, income inequality, the outcomes in our public education system, and workforce readiness are directly a result of the digital divide. This is true even in Seattle. We have an incredible economy, uh, Amazon and Microsoft. People are flocking here from around the country and around the world. Uh, but not, all, not always are they the young people who are coming out of our public education system. 93,000 homes, 50% of Seattle households do not have inter access to the internet. Many are low-income families, and many are immigrants and refugees. Today, Seattle's one in, out of five Seattleites is actually born in another country. Seattle knows it needs to do better, and we know that technology and access to the broadband internet is part of that. And I am looking forward to the exchange of ideas that happen today here, uh, so that we can learn how we move forward. And it is my hope that together we can find a way to overcome the di digital divide, and actually end the digital divide. For our part, Seattle's working on a combination of strategies. I have to tell you, when I came in office, I was very excited about the possibility of municipal broadband until 
the studies came back and indicated that it would be literally the largest tax increase in Seattle. And this is a city that has shown some willingness to increase taxes. Uh, we launched instead last year the Digital Equity Initiative that is looking how we deal with issues of equity in business and education uh, and in nonprofits. And in about a week or so, we'll have some significant um, programs to announce as a result of that. We teamed up with Google and made personal Wi-Fi wi hotspots available for checkout at all of our public libraries. And li literally when these first came out, they were gone the first day. Uh, they were checked out with waiting lists that went on and on. We are adopting a three-prong approach to moving forward. Uh, and that three-prong approach consists of three basic strategies. Uh, reducing regulatory barriers. What can we do to actually make this market work? One of the first things I did as mayor uh, was remove a director's rule that, that prohibited certain types of technology and thus entire companies from functioning within Seattle. Uh, Public-private partnerships. This is something that we're going to have to do with the private sector. Um, and finally, how can we actually find a way through a combination of strategies to be better players in municipal uh, broadband? Um, and we've had some success as a result of those strategies. 60% uh, of Seattle homes now have access uh, to high-speed high gigabit, um, where only 5% did when I came into office. Uh, you're going to hear from our chief technology officer, Michael Matt Miller, shortly about more of these, these uh, programs. I also have to tell you that um, we have explored options around municipal broadband, and there may be strategies that would work, uh, and it may be ultimately the best way to solve the issue of the divide. Uh, but we're not going to be able to do it as we're not going to be able to do a lot of things unless we see an aggressive approach by the federal government uh, to work with local jurisdictions to make that possible. Uh, we have more access in most places. There are parts of this country that are desperate and the problem is much larger. So hopefully at some point um, we'll have a partner once again in D.C. I look forward to working with you and, and our work with next century cities uh, so that we can make progress in this issue. And again, I believe it is going to be a combination. It really is going to be a combination of what we can do in the public sector in conjunction with the private sector. It really is going to be our ability in this situation not just to partner with them because we need the resources, but to partner with them because technology is changing so fast uh, and the economy is changing so fast that the models that we're going to have to develop in the public se sector are going to have to be very nimble. Because if they're not nimble and if we don't have flexibility and if our regulatory environment is too structured, we'll find ourselves uh, having set up a situation to deal with the issue of equity only to find ourselves behind because of the lack of flexibility on our part. So it is a really brave new world uh, for government. And we know this as we deal with things uh, such as Ubers and Lyfts, as uh, Airbnbs. Um, technology is radically changing what happens. And suddenly issues about the ability to pick up your phone and get a car, the ability to find a place to uh, uh, stay in another city, and what happens in that other city to neighborhoods when those folks, when, when places are rented out, all these are connected and all come back to our ability uh, to regulate in a way that's, that's updated and not calcified, uh, to respond to a changing market, market and to constantly realize as this market changes, the issue of equity keeps coming back. Uh, so you are all, you all know much more than I do. You're going to hear from Michael Matt Miller, who is a person uh, who we hired, uh, who understands this in a way that I don't. Uh, so I look forward to learning from all of you uh, how we move forward in this brave new world of the 21st century. Thank you, and again, my apologies for being delayed. Thank you, Mayor. I really appreciate your being here this morning. It's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Edelman. He is Special Assistant to the President for Economic and Technology Policy. In his current role, he oversees the administration's policy development and implementation across a range of, of economic policy issues, including broadband competition and access, technology trade, 
consumer cybersecurity, data privacy, and patent and copyright reform, all of which have been highlighted in the President's State of the Union addresses. It sounds like, you know, David, not like a broad range of topics. <laughs> uh, following his remarks, uh, Michael Matt Miller, the CTO for the City of Seattle, will be joining him on stage to moderate a question and answer session. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Edelman. Thank you. Yeah.